guys, um, you're obviously aware of the announcement. Um, John's going to say a few words as chairman to kick things off, and then uh, throw it across to Tim, who has um, a few words he'd like to say before we open up to you guys and some questions that you're yeah. leading. Should we move the mic? Is that all right? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today in an important day in the journey of the Adelaide Football Club. I'm de delighted on behalf of the club to announce that Tim Silvers has been appointed CEO of the Adelaide Football Club. We've conducted a very thorough and rigorous uh, search and assessment to select the CEO of the club and the feedback in our um, inquiries has been unanimous in that Tim is a passionate, dedicated, uh, values-based person whose focus and past has been closely aligned with the football industry in Australia. He brings a wealth of talent to the task, a talent that is really uh, required for the Adelaide Football Club moving forward in the priorities that we have. During his uh, long period at the Hawthorne Football Club, he's been the acting CEO of the Hawthorne Football Club for a period. Previously Chief Commercial Officer, Chief Operating Officer currently uh, at the uh, Hawthorne Football Club. During that period of time, he's had close interaction with the football department in list management and TPP uh, oversight and soft cap uh, administration. He's been the commercial manager for the Hawthorne Football Club in which he's overseen major commercial external businesses that are contributing substantial revenue streams and funds to the uh, Hawthorne Football Club on an annual basis. He's now, uh, has been currently um, overseeing the $100 million Hawthorne Football Club um, new facility at Dingley in Melbourne. Uh, he's been in charge of that whole project in building a facility opportunity for the Hawthorne Football Club going forward and brings a cross-section of attributes, experience in football, in commercial operations, football department, well-rounded and is exactly what the Adelaide Football Club needs on the journey and the priorities that we've got the club, uh, for the club going, going forward. Um, He's an ideal administrator, and in that context, we're delighted that he's uh, accepted our offer to lead the Adelaide Football Club. I said uh, previously that I'd hoped that we would have um, an appointment in place for the start, first game of the season, and indeed we'll now be able to achieve that with uh, Tim's uh, appointment. So can I now hand over to, to you, Tim? Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks for those kind words. Um, this is an exciting day for me personally and for the Adelaide Football Club. Every club is approaching the upcoming season with renewed enthusiasm after the year that was 2020. I am thrilled to be now part of the Crows family and I would like to start by taking this opportunity to thank the board for the wonderful opportunity to lead this club. I would like to make special mention to the chairman, John Olson, who has been honest, frank and quite supportive throughout the recent recruitment process. I've served my apprenticeship in football at another successful club, Hawthorne. To now hold the title of the Chief Executive Officer here at the Crows is a dream come true and I truly believe the timing could not be better. My experiences and skill set are well suited to this club's current situation and importantly, its future direction. I understand what it means to be part of a successful culture, both on and off the field. 
as well as what it takes to build a platform for su su sorry, sustained success. Together with the board, management, staff, coaches and players, I'm determined to make this club the best it can possibly be. To the thousands of Crows members and fans, I've watched from afar with the admiration of your passion and loyalty you show at all times. I want to strengthen the connection you have with the club, and this is a genuine priority. Likewise, I want to engage meaningfully with the many committed corporate partners who have and will contribute to our success. It will be remiss of me not to thank Hawthorne for their support and endorsement throughout this process. To their president, Jeff Kennett, the board, CEO Justin Reeves and the executive, thank you. The Hawks have helped, me, helped shape me as a person and as a leader. And I wish them all for all the best for season 2021, except when you play Adelaide, of course. The Crows are such a significant part of the South Australian community. And along with my family, we can't wait to officially call Adelaide home. I look forward to leading this club, along with John and the board, our football leaders, Matthew Nix, Matthew Clark and Adam Kelly, along with the executive team. The Adelaide Football Club is going to be a place where everyone is motivated to pursue excellence both on and off the field. Thank you. Open up for questions. Okay, guys, over to, to you. Tim, would you just be able to talk us through, congratulations, Thank firstly, you. could you talk us through how the recruitment process unfolded for you? Were you pursued or did you apply? Um, look, for me, I noticed that Andrew had, had resigned about a month, a month or so ago and I had a quick chat to my wife about the prospect of this, this job coming up. Um, but within a sort of matter of, of days, the, the recruiter had, had reached out to me. So I did a little bit of due diligence on, on the Crows and I've got great connections within the AFL industry. So I, I did a little bit and I spoke to my wife about the potential move. And you know, it didn't take too much to throw my hat in the ring because um, you know, I saw it as a, as a wonderful opportunity to come to a, such a big club, uh, a great club with so, so many members, fans and support. And yeah, I, I jumped at it. When you said you did some due diligence, what exactly did you ask around the industry of the Adelaide Football Club? I suppose it's, it's what makes footy clubs for me is the people and who, who's part of it. So um, my due diligence was around, you know, potentially some of the, some of the board and the chair and, and the executive and sort of how they go about what they do. And um, look, it's been really positive. Um, you know, I, the process was thorough, exhaustive, engaging, um, and that actually gave me real confidence. This is a really well-governed club. So I know it was, a, it was short in terms of time frame, but it was an exhaustive process and I, I was lucky enough to um, be successful in the end. You sort of touched on that. What are the external sort of impressions of the Adelaide Football Club and the, and the way that it works coming from someone who's been at, at another club for 17 years? Well, first and foremost, I looked at it as just, it's such a big brand and such a big club massive membership base, so many fans, you know, it was a, the sheer size of it and also a club that is unassisted with some of the, some of the sort of high level parts. Um, you know, in terms of sort of on field, uh, you know, there's been some, some successes in years and then, you know, some challenges o over the last sort of two or three. So what, what I've noticed from afar, that um, the club's um, undertaken, I suppose, a process, a potential re rebuild and starting to sort of re reshape their list and sort of set themselves up for their next, um, their next tier of success. Okay. Well, what, what I see and why I see this as being such a wonderful opportunity for me personally and the club is that there's, there's a new start in a sense that there's a lot of new key pillars coming in. There's a new chair, there's a new CEO, there's a pretty recent head of footy and also the coach. So I call them the four key pillars. And they've come in and they're starting to reshape and remould and set up this club for the future. I've come from a, from a club at Hawthorne that's had some success. And when I first started as, 
as a youngster, I will say, the, one of the first things that happened in, in my journey was sort of the end of 2004, where, where the Hawthorne Football Club made the decision that it was, it was also on a journey. Um, you know, they, they appointed a, a, new, a new coach. They had brought in a new head of footy, which was Mark Evans at the time. Um, they, they brought in a new chair not too long thereafter and also a new CEO. And they reset their pillars. They embarked on a, on a rebuild for the club and I suppose they focused on, on youth in those first few years and I, I got an appreciation for that. And that, that youth and those decisions in those early years of 05, 06, they became the nucleus of what were sort of premiership teams down the track. So, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I shouldn't compare, but I, I do see this in, in my view and for the clubs that this is a wonderful opportunity and um, yeah, I'd like to get involved. Will you take some time to obviously address some key decisions? One that the club's been grappling with for a while is the Tyson Stengel situation. Will you have a hands-on involvement in hopefully the resolution of that at some point? Um, from, from my end, um, look, I don't have all the intimate details around that. I, I actually got informed by John uh, that I was successful sort of lunchtime yesterday and I've been on a plane and it's been a bit of a whirlwind ever since, so I, I, I don't have a great un understanding of that, but um, you know, I will work with the team and the leaders and try to work out a resolution as quickly as I can. Are there any big changes or shifts in direction you think members with hands can expect to see with those changes you've mentioned and now, and now you're in the role? Um, I, I suppose first and foremost is, is going to be for me is uh, uh, bringing more to the connection between the fans and the members in the club. Um, being more open, um, you know, opening up our inner sanctum and getting, the, I suppose, our supporters to understand what journey we're on. You know, we're, we're going to be really public about it. Um, you know, we're going to invest in our youth, invest in our leaders, and hopefully what we do now will set us up for the future. Do you feel there has been a disconnect prior to you coming to the role and those other changes that have been made? Uh, look at it. Oh, did you want to answer that? There, there, well, there have been... Uh, well, <laughs> well we just swap... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, look, the last two to three years, uh, there's been some adverse environment that the clubs had to, to manage. And the reshaping of the football department with the new coach, general manager of football, the assistant coaches that have come in, there is a new agenda in the football department. You're seeing that with the young players, their participation, and it's become infectious, this new attitude and culture. So there's, the club's been on a journey and there's another step for us to take and uh, Tim's appointment is bringing his wealth of experience in a commercial sense, in a football sense, to add to the journey that we are on. And I couldn't think of anybody with greater set of credentials than Tim to undertake the role that we've got at the Adelaide Football Club. He mentioned that we undertook a very rigorous uh, assessment. We did. There were a number of interviews, there were a number of testing, all the references uh, were followed up, and there, uh, across the board, the people we spoke to, it was unanimous across the board. People from other clubs and in the industry endorsing what Tim would have to offer the Adelaide Football Club. So addressing the issues going forward. Talk about the club's culture in the last couple of years. Do you believe with this appointment now there's going to be a significant change? Yeah. Look, Tim is um, a value-based person. He knows dealing with football clubs, with players, with supporters, and the whole range of stakeholders. He's experienced in that, and. Uh, coupled with the football department and the way in which Matthew Nixon and Adam Kelly now talk and open up and explain, which is what we want to be as open, transparent as we possibly uh, can be on the journey. And that's bringing uh, engagement with our supporters and members in with us on that journey. Someone from an AFL background makes a big difference. Well, it's the knowledge that Tim has is going to be really valuable for us. Having worked, as I mentioned, in football departments, list management, soft cap, TPP, he understands that system uh, backwards. But he also understands from a commercial background, the revenue streams are critical to underpin the expenditure in the football department to get on-field success. They are linked directly together. And that's where... Uh, 
the, his experience in football, in commercial, in finance, and in actually running a football club, like the Hawthorne Football Club as its acting CEO for an, a period of time, that experience coming to play with us at this point in time is really going to be a valuable asset. Football first was one of the other emphases in the, uh, the job description. Did the, did the club get away from that as well in the previous period? Well, what I'm not focused on is tomorrow, not yesterday. You learn um, from history, you learn and you plan the future. And the adverse environment that the club has um, been through over the last two to three years, that's history. What we're looking for is the journey ahead and putting in place, as Tim has said, the pillars to underpin that journey and a positive journey forward. We've got uh, good draft picks. We've got a, the youngest uh, team in the AFL at the moment. And they're on a journey, and you saw that at the end of last year. And I think you can see with the passion and the determination and the attitude prevailing in the footy department and the players, there's going to be success going forward. But patience will be required as these young players get on-field game experience and build into a, a team approach. You know, training last year under COVID rules where a coach wants to put in a game plan, but you can't, you do it in pods of eight. I mean, talk about having your hand tied behind your back and introducing a game plan. Hopefully that's passed and we can will positively move forward. What are the club's plans in this next era for its esports and baseball and some of those other non-football ventures? Well, post-COVID, um, uh, business units uh, at the club need to have the ruler run over them, and, and we will. And that is a, a proper governance and business approach. You, you monitor your business units from time to time. So in that context, Tim's background is that he brought major commercial business opportunities to the Hawthorne Football Club. He's managed them, he knows them. And yes, we will look at those business, uh, business units of the club. Are they performing? Are they delivering? Do they uh, take attention away from the Football First program? All those things will be weighed up. But that's not unusual in a business, that you would look at units from time to time and make sure they're still meeting the objectives of the club. Holidays at the moment. Is he officially done in his role now? Uh, yes, he will. Uh, Andrew, uh, as you know, resigned and agreed to uh, stay for a transition period. As I've said previously, we hope this process would be able to put in place a replacement by season start. We, we're going to get there. And you, um, Andrew has uh, some accrued leave, which he's working out um, and on holidays, which he usually does, as I understand, in about March this period and he's on holidays um, uh, of his accrued annual leave, uh, which will then finalise his time at the Adelaide Football Club. So will he have any informal role in the handover from here in terms of um, helping Tim? Well, we're, we're, OK, well, we're just still working through that, that process with Tim uh, at the moment. Um, the exact start date is still to be negotiated between the parties. Um, I've had a discussion with... Uh, the president of the Hawthorne Football Club and um, the recruiters have had discussions with the CEO. We've got a bit of an understanding about how soon they will release Tim. Um, and so we're, we're working through that. I can't give you an exact date, but it'll be, um, Tim will be here before we start the first game of footy. John spoke glowingly about how Tim had helped Hawthorne with their new facility. Has he got a bit of a, a task ahead of him getting a new facility here for the Crows? Um, yeah, well, that's a that's a journey we're on, as as you as you would note. Um, that is a priority, a priority amongst our clubs uh, and members of the club. Um, we're focusing on a couple of uh, locations now. We're working our way through them as expeditiously as we can, um, ruling out some locations uh, and just moving on. And some real detailed work is being undertaken in that. But of course, it's part of a jigsaw. You've got to look at uh, the financing of that, many components of putting that package together, but it's a priority. So the experience of the last two to three years um, that Tim has with Hawthorne, I'm sure will be valuable as we work our way through that project. Just on that, 
Tim as everyone's finished with John. Well, have you, could I follow up on that one? Sorry, yeah. John, is, is Theberton the desired location? Um, it's, it, it's one of the locations that we've done an enormous amount of work on and are continuing to do so. There's one other site that we've been asked uh, we have been asked to have a look at and we will do that and we'll go through a process of making a detailed assessment of that site. Uh, but as it stands today, uh, we have a good body of work done in relation to Theberton. Are you able to divulge where the second site might be? Well, it's not in the park lands. <laughs> Dealing with the City Council, obviously unanimously voted no last mm. night. Well, uh, I took the view that it was really important for us to look at all possibilities and eliminate uh, those possibilities. Uh, what you've got now is a clear indication from the Adelaide City Council of what is acceptable to them and what is not. And so we'll no longer have uh, months of a discussion and negotiation. It's been brought to a head, which was really what the objective was. So that has been eliminated now, and we just simply move on. Does that timeline remain for the, the mid-year uh, yeah. push? Yeah, I, we, we want to certainly by June come to a landing on uh, the, uh, the, the preferred site. That is the site, that is the site that we'll be now completing our work on. I understand the club's finances are going to be released today? Yes, um, tonight. Yeah, tonight. Yeah. Okay, it's been a difficult year for everyone. What can we expect to see? Do you think the club's been okay? Well, you'll see uh, an impact from COVID last year. Um, that has meant that um, we will have a loss that we'll report tonight, uh, but that, um, which has meant that uh, we've had to go into overdraft. But that, to Tim's point earlier, we are an unassisted club. That means we've made our own arrangements uh, through um, Adelaide and Bendigo Bank to undertake an overdraft to cover uh, the loss. And we have a strategy over the next 18 months to attempt to eliminate that, uh, that debt as a result of COVID. I just wonder if the mic's come up, we can ask you about Tyson Stengel, that situation, where is that at? Uh, that's in... Um, detailed negotiation between the parties. John, could I just clarify something about Andrew's departure, if that's okay? Six months ago, he said he was in this for the long haul. You came and replaced Chappie, and then a few months later, his exit seemingly was sped up. When you were appointed chairman, did you feel the need for change quicker than perhaps would have been anticipated? Well, change, uh, change happens, and change is inevitable, and um, the whole raft of discussions. Um, I know that Andrew had been um, approached uh, for another position uh, in the latter part of last year. Uh, so it's in discussions with him and his uh, decision to resign didn't surprise me in that context. And so uh, we've been working through and then embarked um, quickly on his replacement because we wanted to have as seamless uh, transfer as we possibly could for the CEO's position. So you didn't, you didn't, when you took over, you didn't see a need to change the CEO as a, a, an important order of business, it just happened organically? Well, you, you have these discussions with, uh, with key people from time to time, as I have with a whole raft of, uh, of people. You know, last year was a pretty, uh, pretty tough time for those in the industry. and. When you go through, as the Adelaide Football Club did, having to uh, voluntary and involuntary retirements and downsize substantially, that is a real pressure point for people to persevere with. So, um, you know, people look for other opportunities from time to time and that's to be expected. Is there any, for want of a better term, key performance indicators? How will you as a board determine whether this was a successful point? How, well, um, First up, uh, within three months, we will determine uh, after Tim's been here, observed, made his own assessments to establish what the key performance indicators are going forward. But if you ask me uh, what uh, the discussion points would be, rather than what they are, it will be um, implementing the COVID uh, debt uh, elimination strategy, focusing on uh, our new facilities and overcoming the hurdles to identify the location and implement the fundraising for our new facility. 
In indeed, in further to that, uh, engagement with our membership base to bring them in, feel part of the club, um, in a, a, a way that takes them on the journey for the new facility and the engagement with us, uh, support uh, for the football department to continue the journey that they've started, to get on-field success leading to, in a year or two's time, uh, finals appearances. There been a bit of a disconnect? You've mentioned it a few times between the getting the fans engaged. Has there been a disconnect in recent years? Well, when you go through three years of sort of adverse environment for a variety of reasons, a disappointment of the 2017 Grand Final and then other issues that roll over, um, I think your fans want a reset, a refocus, new journey, and it's an exciting journey. And can I just say to you, I've observed the players um, when they haven't been out training, hanging together in the shed, playing friendly soccer games. It's the environment amongst this team is now really good. Someone said to me the other day, it's great coming in here. You call it coming to work, but it's not coming to work. And that sort of environment that's been developed in the footy department and amongst the players is a signpost of the right direction this club is going. And that was put in place last year. A number of those key decisions were made before I arrived here, but they're now playing out. And it's the development of that and Tim's experience which will assist and accelerate that. Thanks, John. <coughs> well, <laughs> you know, sort of following on from that a bit, you've touched on it a bit, Tim, but culturally, what makes a good football club from your perspective as the man at the top of the tree? Um, well, like, like it's been mentioned, it's, it's around sort of the values of the people and finding the right people in the right positions to lead your club. So from my end, the, the leadership is really key critical and we have to have the right people in, in those positions that um, undertake the right values in and around the, the club. So culture, in my mind, it, it's the way we do things around here and I think I'm going to get to know the people. Well, that's going to be a key plank of my leadership is to be people focused, understand who they are, what makes them tick, and also how we how we can create an environment that will allow them to excel. Is it through the culture that you hope that, that leads to helping with the player retention? Um, no, no doubt, no doubt. I I'm coming in to try to create and foster an environment that people, players, staff, administrators all want to come to work and enjoy their their work, and I think you get retention out of that. So that that will be a focus of mine. Sounds like you'll probably hit the ground running. Do you have any, you know, I know it's early days, but do you have any thoughts on where you would like to see the club physically based? We've heard it's not going to be the Parklands, but any preference for yourself? Uh, it's probably too early for me to judge on, on where, but I, I know and speaking to John and the board and some of the executives that, you know, it's, it's, it's a must that we need to find, find a new home that will allow our members and fans to have a destination mm -hmm. and also have an elite facility to allow, allow our players to perform to an elite level. So that's the focus where, I, you know, it's really early for me to judge. You spoke about having fans more connected with the club. How do you think you'd go about doing that in specifics? And do you have any creative ideas for how you might do that? Um, well, I sort of touched on it before. It, for me, it's around content. I call it content is king. How can we give more content to our members and our fans to know more about the club? What, what makes us tick and what makes us hopefully, hopefully good? So it's potentially opening the doors a little bit more to people like yourselves and being more transparent and um, bringing our members and our fans along for the journey. Tim, can you just describe the moment you were informed you were the successful candidate, and was there a sense of nervous excitement? How, how would you sum up the um, moment you were told? It's hard to hard to sum it up. Or like I, I personally, for me, I, I've been looking for this opportunity for for a number of years. We touched on that. I was interim CEO at Hawthorne for for a number of months during 2017. So um, my journey has been pretty focused on on getting a CEO's role over the last sort of two years, um, and I. Through the COVID period, I felt that you know maybe that opportunity mightn't come up. It was a, like all clubs at Hawthorne, it was a little bit of a fight for survival, and um, yeah, to go through the process and 
and you know, get the call from John yesterday while, while I was in my office at Hawthorne um, was, uh, yeah, I, I can hardly take the smile off my face. It's, it's been, it's been a, an amazing sort of 24 hours and um, yeah, I'm just elated to get this opportunity at such a great club. You hearing from, from the chair that the, you know, you're know dealing with a COVID debt and you're looking at 18 months before you can sort of start chipping away at that? Oh, that doesn't frighten me at all. Like I, I understand the finances of footy clubs really well. Um, we've got to maintain and, you know, uh, I suppose ring fence the current revenues that we've got. And if we can come out in season 2021 and it's a, you know, it's a, a better season where it allows more fans and um, our corporates to get to games and we can provide gr growth opportunities that, you know, at that sort of debt um, with this size club, um, with the amount of support that it's got behind it, you know, I'd be confident that we could deliver that. What's your knowledge of Adelaide and the, your history with the city of Adelaide like? Um, I'd, 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 my journey is that I, I lived in a lot of houses when, when I was a youngster across sort of Melbourne and Queensland. I, I lived in 15 houses by the age of 15, but um, one of them wasn't in Adelaide. Um, but um, I've, I've come here for the footy a lot, um, got a lot of friends that played in the Sandful, um, know a few people at, at the Adelaide Crows and also at Port and um, know it's a, I'll say a footy mad state, which, um, you know, I'm, I'm a footy tragic myself, so um, I, I'm excited to come here and relocate here, bring my family and um, like I think I said, I, I want to entrench myself not only in this club but also the community and, um, um, yeah, understand what makes Adelaide so great. You say footy tragic, any playing or coaching history? Uh, not, not really. I, I did, I, look, I, I've been involved in a AFL since the sort of tender age of six and I've always played footy and I, I played um, into my 30s. I was an amateur footballer and lo loved the game and still have coached um, my two kids. Um, and yeah, I love the sport, love the industry and um, that's part of the reason I think helps me being here today. Did you mention your start date when the actual official start date? No, I, I haven't. We, no. We're about to work that out, but um, I, I will be here for the first game which is in about two and a half weeks. Last couple of boys, or both of mine? Oh, good, good. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for your time, guys. Okay. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. I want to see love, man.